When you triple geometry, you convert polygons that have more than three points into three-point polys, into triangles. Uh, there are several tools in Lightwave that allow you to triple, and each kind of has its own use, and I thought we could go ahead and take a look. I'm just going to start by creating a flat plane. I'm going to go ahead and kill those extra segments. Okay, just using the arrow keys to do that. Raise it up, raise this up. Okay, so this is a four-point polygon. One, two, three, four. And if I want to, I can convert it into two triangles. Let me select the polygon, come over to Multiply, under Subdivide, choose Triple. And what it does is it converts, it looks at the geometry and figures out how to turn it into triangles. So a lot of times people are confused by when you hear triple, you think of three. And so you think that it's going to take a polygon, a four-point polygon, and convert it into three triangles but it really only converts it into two and of course depending on the number of points you have on your on your polygon uh, will determine how it's going to triple it so if I go ahead and create let's just create with the sketch tool I'm going to create a shape I'm going to freeze it into a polygon okay so we've got lots of points now, if I triple that, which is Shift-T or multiply, triple, I'm going to hit Shift-T. What it does is it looks and figures out how can it convert this polygon into multiple triangles. So it just selects each point and connects three points to make a, a polygon. Now, this looks like a bit of a mess, and you want to be careful about working uh, with the triple tool or tripling your geometry, because you only do it when you need it. And well, when do you need it? Well, sometimes you want to take a polygonal mesh, you want to take polygons, and you want to displace it. Say you want to create um, ocean waves, you want to have just nice rolling waves. If you had a bunch of four-point polygons, you run the risk of those polygons while they're being displaced you run the risk of them flipping uh, because they don't know which way to face at render time it's rendering triangles so let's take a look at that I'm gonna just grab another flat plane and I'm gonna make just a few segments and let's come over to modify jitter and I'm just gonna jitter these points okay now this one looks uh, backwards, looks inside out. It's actually, <clears throat> excuse me, it's actually uh, non-planar. And non-planar meaning, let's, uh, we'll come back to this in just a second, just so we're all on the same page. What I mean by non-planar, I'm going to use the arrow keys to get rid of those segments, is if you have one point that doesn't share the same axis, that's a non-planar. Think of a polygon as a piece of glass and you couldn't do, you couldn't take a, a flat piece of glass and raise one corner. It would break. Well, polygons can break. And sometimes you can get away with just a subtle non-planar and Lightwave will know which way it should face at render time. Uh, but if you end up with something that looks like this, which sometimes you may you may want, you might want to jitter the geometry, especially um, using displacement maps in layout. Well, it doesn't know which way the polygon should face, and sometimes you think it does because OpenGL is handling it, uh, like this one right here. See how this point is kicked in? Okay. Well, right now it's OpenGL can display it, but it doesn't mean that at render time it's not going to be flipped like it might decide that half of it is facing one way and half is facing the other. The way we get around this is shift T and then I'm going to take these and flip them. Okay, and take this and flip them just using F for flip. Okay. The thing about a triangle is it's impossible for it to be non-planar. Okay, no matter which way I move the point, it's all the polygons are always going to be planar. So Tripling geometry sometimes helps fix, well, it always fixes non-planar polys because uh, triangles can't be non-planar. Uh, you don't always want to just triple all of your geometry. It can be unsightly like we saw earlier and just harder to manage. But there is a time where you're going to want to work with triangles. Okay, so this is um, one example of why you'd want to use um, triple, but there's a couple other triple tools that we should probably know about. I've created three sets of the same geometry. So um, we've got 
uh, a disk, I just use the disk tool, and this has fewer points than this. This is your standard with 24. Okay, and I want to show you three different ways of tripling. With this first set, I'm just going to hit Shift T, which is the same as coming over to multiply, triple, that's what we've been using. Okay, and we can see that it breaks the geometry breaks the polygon up into triangles. Now it's a kind of a random pattern. It's just looking and going, okay, I've got, um, you know, these three points will make a triangle, these three points will make a triangle, and then same here. We've got more points, therefore we have more triangles. But if you want a little more order to your, um, the, to the triangles that are going to be made, there's a couple other tools. I'm going to select these two polygons, come over to multiply, more, and use fast triple fan and what that does you can see it's a completely different pattern what that does is it creates triangles but all the triangles share one point so you get this fan shape it fans out from this one point and you can see it here as well it fans out from this one point okay now depending on what you're building would depend on how you want to lay out the geometry but knowing that um, fast triple fan will have all the triangles connected to one point uh, might give you the the setup that you want rather than having a random pattern here okay if I grab uh, the last set and come over to multiply subdivide more fast triple traverse okay now that's a different pattern it's a it's a lot more organized than triple but but what is it doing what well let's take a look um, it's easier to see on this one, but what it does is it starts creating triangles from the outer edges and works its way in. So as you can see, it grabbed the outer edges, created a triangle, grabbed the outer edge here, created a triangle, and then the next triangle it could make was one step in. You can really see it in, the, in play on this one that had 24 points. It created triangles right here. I'm just going to select a few of them. Okay, it created triangles along the outer edge, but then it said, okay, I still have, I still have geometry that's not triangles. So it worked one step in, and that's when it created these inner triangles. Okay, and then once it had those, it still had uh, some geometry that it needed to deal with. So it created these inner triangles, and then, of course, the last step was this one. So, um, that's the fast triple traverse tool and it works from the outside edge in. So now we have three triple tools, three tools that will triple our geometry uh, that we can choose from and we can we can use the standard triple which just will randomly triple the geometry. It'll just find the points and start drawing triangles, start creating uh, triangles. We can use the fast triple fan which all the triangles that are going to be created are going to share one point so it, it builds a fan shape and then we have fast triple traverse which works from the outer edges in so that's just a quick look at tripling geometry uh, and now we've got three tools in our toolkit that will allow us to do it